There is one easy to identify trading metric that if you learn to use properly can produce a 90% win rate. In this video, you'll learn what it is, how to use it, and express excellent risk reward trades with the power of options. I'm Mike Bellafiori, and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City and proud to develop numerous seven and even eight figure per year traders. Learn from the pros so you can grow your trading account. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg. I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan. And I can tell you that one of the most common complaints that we hear from traders all over the world is that they're struggling to maintain any kind of consistency in their trading. They complain that they lose trades just as often as they win them at best, and that the frequent losses are demoralizing and devastating to their confidence. And if this sounds like you, trust me, you're not alone. Wouldn't it be nice to find a trading style that flipped the script on that entire situation and instead of suffering through constant demoralizing losses, instead of that, you literally expect to win 90% of your trades because of one simple, easy to identify metric that you can use trade after trade. Well, that's what this video is about today. We're going to share with you what that metric is and how it's used by professional options traders to set them up for a trade that has a statistical likelihood of working out 90% of the time. If you're absolutely brand new to options trading, you, you don't know, you know much about options and how they work, we've created a video for you to understand options basics. And if you click on the video appearing on your screen right now, it will lay the groundwork for you to understand the metric we'll be talking about in this video and how to use that to set up options trades that have a 90% probability of working out. Then when you're finishing, you come back and watch the rest of this video. The best way to explain how this high probability options trade works is through a recent example using options on Tesla, the mo most well-known electric vehicle maker in the world. And as you can see, Tesla had a very rough year in 2022, dropping 70% down from above 400 to 123.18 by the end of the year. And looking at the RSI oscillator by the fourth quarter of 2022, the RSI had fallen below 30 into what are referred to by traders as oversold conditions. And so it would be natural for a trader to come into 2023 with a mindset that a bounce for Tesla would be a reasonable trading thesis and that there was a better than even chance that Tesla was at or near its bottom. And so let's say that you had decided that you were on balance bullish on Tesla coming into 2023, but recognizing that going long on a stock that was so bearish for so long has its risks. And so you wanted to implement a conservative strategy to play your bullish thesis for the stock. So let's take a look at a way that you could have handled this. So let's head back to December 19th, 2022, one of the final trading days of 2022, when Tesla had opened at 150.81. And so suppose that you pulled up an options chain that expired 60 days later, two months later, and you looked at your options broker's platform and identified the column known as delta for that options chain. All professional options brokers will provide you with the delta column, and it should be readily apparent to you. But if you don't see it prominently displayed, you should call your customer support and have them walk you through how to display the delta of each option in your broker software platform. They'll all have that column. And so the delta of an option is a mathematically arrived at estimate of how much that option will move based on how much the asset that that option relates to moves that day. And it's too complicated in this video to get into how an options delta is calculated, but suffice to say that there's a very high correlation between a put options delta and the likelihood that the asset, in this case Tesla stock, will be priced below that put option strike price on the day it expires 60 days later. And so it makes sense, doesn't it, intuitively, that the 105 put, which is 45 points below its current trading price of 150.81, would have a delta of 10 because on a 150 stock, it would take an additional 30% drop on that stock that had already dropped 62% for the year by that point in December. And so what that delta of 10.36 is telling you is that statistically, Tesla has an approximate 10% chance of closing below 105 on February 17th when that option expires, which also means, obviously, that there's about a 90% chance that Tesla will close above 105 on February 17th. So 
Keep that in mind as we keep working through this example. Okay, and so let's say that you sold 10 of those 105 puts for a price of 293, and you also simultaneously bought 10 of the puts right below that in the options chain, which is the 100 strike price put option for a price of 234. Well, when you've done that, selling put options closer to the current market price of the stock and buying put options on the same expiration below that, when you do that, you have entered into what options traders refer to as a put credit spread. And it's a strategy employed regularly by professional traders working for prop firms like ourselves. OK, so let's now break down exactly what happens in our account when we sell a put credit spread. And as you can see, when we sold 10 of those 105 puts, the price was 293. But remember, each options contract represents 100 shares of Tesla stock. So you multiply that price by 100 and you sold 10 of them. And so multiplying it all together, you receive $2,930 for selling those 10 puts. But at the same time, remember, you bought 10 of the 100 puts for protection, five points below that for $2.34. And as you can see from that same kind of calculation, we pay out $2,340, meaning that when you net that out from the cash proceeds from selling the 105 puts, you end up with $590 in positive cash flow that goes right into your account and increases the cash balance in your account. And incidentally, you'll need $4,410 in your account to make this trade, which is also the trade's worst case scenario loss. OK, so now let's move ahead to the day that this trade expires, 60 days later, on February 17th of 2023. And as you can see, Tesla initially sold off further, but then began to bounce dramatically in January. And by mid-February, had actually rallied over 200, closing at 208.31 on the day this options trade expires. And so as a result, with these options having expired, we can now assign a final value to them. Starting with the initial cash flow that we received for entering this trade in the first place, the 590 we spoke about earlier, we then focus on the 105 puts that we sold, those 10 puts we were short. And since Tesla closed more than 100 points higher at 208.31, then those obviously expire worthless, right? Because... After all, who would exercise their right to sell Tesla options at 105 when they could sell them for over 200 on the open market? And so obviously that option, as well as the 100 we were long below that, both expired worthless, resulting in both options expiring with no value. And therefore, the trader just gets to walk away with the initial cash flow that he received for selling the put credit spread in the first place. In other words, the 590 he received when he first executed the trade, becomes his trade profit as well. And so if you remember nothing else from this video, at least please remember what we're sharing with you right now on this slide. And that is when you first sell a credit spread, you receive cash. So an expiration day, if both options expire worthless, that's a really good thing. Why? Because you get to just pocket that original cash you received for entering the trade in the first place. That's yours to keep, and so the options just expire worthless and die and go to options heaven. And so you can see now why we located the put options at 10 deltas. Remember, 10 delta options statistically have about a 90% chance of expiring worthless, and that's what we want. We want the short options that we sold to have a 90% chance of expiring worthless, as they did in this case, and there are four, obviously, the long options, which are always going to be even further down uh, then the short options, those have an even greater chance of expiring worthless, giving you, therefore, a 90% chance of winning the trade, which is a real confidence booster if you think about it. And that's the secret to how these trades work. The options delta is the metric that makes this whole thing work. And so what some traders like to do, assuming they continue to remain bullish on the stock, is to do an entire campaign for a year replicating what they did on the first trade continuously throughout the year once their capital frees up on the previous trade, which is when the options expire. And so let's say that on that day, the February 17th trade expired, we went ahead and initiated a new trade, expiring about two months later on April 23rd. And we again identified the put option closest to the 10 delta, which in this case was the 145, and we sold 10 of those and just like last time, bought 10 of the 140s, which, as you can see from the calculation, results in a trade which had positive cash flow initially 
of $600 and required $4,400 in capital. And so moving again to the day this trade expires, you can see that after channeling between 165 and 210 for the duration of the trade, the stock closed at the bottom of that range at 165.08 on the day that the trade expired, such that the short puts were more than 20 points below Tesla's closing price, and the long puts were 25 points below that, rendering both puts worthless for another $600 win, as you can see. And so with our capital freed up, we can move on to the June trade, which expires on June 16th, where we sell 10 of the 125 puts for a buck 72, as those are the closest to a 10 delta, and we buy 10 of the 120 puts for a dollar 25, leaving us with $470 in cash, in this case, on required capital of 4,530. If we move forward to the day that that trade expires, we can see that Tesla had rallied further, closing for its year-to-date high of 260.54 on June 16th, the day that this trade expired. And so again, with the short puts expiring over 135 points below Tesla's closing price and the long puts expiring 140 points below, both obviously expire worthless for yet another win. And all of this shouldn't be that surprising, right? Because we basically expected this. We intentionally located our options at a point where they were 90% likely to both expire worthless. And guess what? In the first three cases, they all expired worthless. Okay, so we went through the rest of the year using this exact same protocol. And rather than running through every single trade individually, we've summarized the full campaign on this slide. The first three trades, the February, April, and June, we just reviewed in detail. And so the next trade was the August trade, where the 10 delta short puts were located at 195, and the long puts five below that at 190. Tesla closed at 215.49 on the August expiration, leaving us with the initial $600, which we collected at the beginning of that trade, just like we did in all of the previous trades. Although the strikes and the cash we get varies from trade to trade, will always receive positive cash flow. And as happened again in this case, if the stock closes above the short puts, then it has to logically close even more above the long strike, yielding us a full profit of the original cash flow. The October trade was located at 165 and 160, and the stock closed at 211.93, which led to a full win of the original 590 collected at the outset of that trade while the December trade, which also coincidentally was located at the 165 and 160 strikes, expired worthless with Tesla closing far above both the short and long puts. And so when you tally it all up for the year, the trade won in all six of those 60-day trades we made during the year with a total of $3,370 collected during the year. The largest capital amount used during the trade was during the June trade, where we were required to put up 4530 in capital. And so conservatively stating the return against the largest amount of capital we needed at any point during the trade during the year, as you can see from the calculation, we attained a 74% return in 12 months using this technique. And that result isn't super surprising because remember, we intentionally located our put options at a location that were statistically about 90% likely to expire worthless. And since that is the desired outcome, it's natural that we had a high win rate and a terrific return. Now, having said that, you can't expect to have each trade be a win using the strategy because, of course, 10% of the time, the stock will close below the short strike, which will cause a loss on the trade in all likelihood. Now, before we wrap up, I'd like to cover one more topic, and that is, as I just mentioned, there are going to be trades where the stock may threaten to close below the short put, which, as I just mentioned, would cause a loss. And so what they like to do is to pick a kind of line in the sand below which they will do something to defend the trade, to avoid the situation where either option expires with value on expiration day. So let's take a look at an example of how that would work using one of the trades of this Tesla campaign that we just went over. So we're going to head back to that April trade, which worked out fine, as you know, but there was a point during that trade that might have made you a little bit nervous, and that took place on March 13th. You see, when this trade was first initiated, Tesla was trading at 208.31, as you'll recall. But by March 13th, Tesla had sold off back down to 171.57 in the early afternoon of that day. 
And so if we look at the options trade, you'll see something interesting. And that is that the delta of the short puts that we had sold, the 145s had increased from the original 10 delta to now 20 deltas. And for some traders, that is a kind of line in the sand because when the deltas of the short put doubles, it means that the chances of those puts not expiring worthless has now dropped to 80%, which doesn't sound like much. But when you consider that the chances of the stock closing below the short put strike has now doubled from 10 to 20%, for some conservative traders, that becomes a line in the sand. And they're going to take some corrective action at that point. And so a very typical corrective action at this point, what options traders refer to as a trade adjustment, is to take the entire put credit spread trade and move it back down to its original deltas, which in this case means moving it down to the 135, 125 put credit spread, as you can see on this slide. And so basically, we're making the trade safer and more likely to expire worthless. Thus, we can pocket the cash flow. That's the goal. However, if we do make this adjustment, we've got to realize that there's an implication on cash flow because that roll down had a cost to it. So let's take a look at that, starting with acknowledging that we received that cash flow that we talked about earlier for the April trade in the amount of $600. And then remember, we're rolling the credit spread down. So we've got to buy back the 145 puts that we sold for a price of 523, resulting in cash outflow of $5,230. But then we're selling off the 140 long puts that we bought, and that brings in 4180 And we're also going to receive positive cash flow for selling the new short put position at 130 in the amount of 2620 And then we're going to go ahead and spend 2060 of that on the long puts at 125 resulting in net positive cash flow after the roll of $110. And so while we still have some positive cash flow, there has been a serious cost of doing this roll. But some traders will take this step to be ultra conservative. Now, if we move forward to the day that this trade expires on April 21st, you'll remember that Tesla closed at 165.08 that day. And so that is well above the new location of the put credit spread at 130 and 125, as you can see, resulting in both of those puts expiring worthless. But in this roll down scenario, the trade is still profitable, but less so only $110 because of the roll down procedure. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is that options trades can be set up to deliver extremely high probability wins, as we have demonstrated in this video, which can lead to very high levels of returns on capital in the right conditions. So not only will you be building confidence in your trading skills, but you'll be earning a pretty good return on top of that. These are the kinds of strategies that professional traders at our firm are trained to implement. And now you've got that knowledge to prudently employ a similar trading style for your personal trading. Now, if you'd like to learn three more option strategies that our pro traders use, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, and the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money, whether the market goes up or down or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index trade, even if you're wrong on the direction, then click the link that's appearing right now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free workshop registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com.